Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Charlie and today we will be installing an SSD into an iMac G3. What are you, Drago 1? Yes. So I've been wanting to do an iMac G3 hard drive replacement video for a while now. And the reason is, is because of this. This is the old hard drive that goes into these iMac G3s. They are slow, they are loud, they are unreliable, and they only house 13 gigabytes of memory. I mean storage. Seems like a not which is enough for most cases, but I like to go, I like more than I need because it makes me feel better and it's better than not having enough, enough space. So anyway, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be replacing this big bulky boy with this small slim boy. This is a Samson SSD and this is the type of SSD that would go into a uh, laptop. As you can see, the size difference is pretty Jurassic. However, the Samson SSD is a 128 gigabyte SSD, which is a huge improvement and totally overkill compared to this thing. Now, this iMac supports a maximum of 128 gigabytes of storage. However, older tray loaders only support up to eight to boot off of, but they do work with larger sizes. So that's why I decided to use a slut loader and this is why I chose this specific size. I already have this lying around, so whatever. Anyway. So, one of the problems you're going to come through is when you're trying to do this is the uh, older hard drives, which is what these use, use this special connector, this older style connector that looks like this, and the SSD uses this other connector. So this is an IDE interface, and this is a SATA interface, and SATA interfaces are the newer style interface that hard drives and SSDs use nowadays. Like, you can even find a hard drive like this nowadays with a SATA interface, and if I could find one, I could probably show it later, but whatever, but... So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this adapter that I bought for $10 off Amazon. And yes, I used, Am I used Amazon this one time because I wanted it to come quick and it couldn't even, they couldn't even do that. It took like a week, it took like a week until they told me that the ship, the package was lost in shipping and then I had to reorder it and it came, finally came today. So yeah, so it's $10. So what this does is you basically plug this in to the SSD like so. Plug in like so, and now this is fully compatible with the iMac G3. So, some some of the questions you may have is why would you want to use an SSD with your iMac G3? Well, I compiled a list here to tell you why. So some of the advantages are the faster and improved read-write times. So, SSDs are a lot faster than hard drives, and they're more efficient, and the read-write times are so much better. So, like, let's say you're copying files to something, you take a lot less time. It also boots in a lot less time and it's very, uh, very fast and efficient. And they're also pretty energy efficient, like anyone cares, but who cares? But anyway, moving on. Also, it makes the computer completely silent. So if you didn't know, these iMacs actually have no cooling fans at all. The older trailer models do have cooling fans, but these do not. And the reason why these make sound is because of the hard drive. So theoretically, if the hard drive was an SSD and made no sound, the computer would be completely silent. Except for the CD drive in some cases, like if you're using the CD drive, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Most of the time you're not going to be using it. There's also more storage, as I said before, 13 gigabytes to 128 gigabytes. 128 is way overkill than what you really need, but I plan on storing a lot of stuff on here, which is probably not even going to take up half the space, but I recommend 64, but I already had this one lying around, so whatever. There's also increased reliability. Older hard drives like these, uh, are usually kind of reliable. They're known for, they're gonna break eventually. At the moment, they're okay. This one actually works. It's for my graphite. So, uh, it works, so that's nice. And then also, the upgrade's cheap. So, overall, this is like a $30 upgrade with the adapter and the SSD. This is, this is you can buy used SSDs like this for like 20 bucks. So, pretty good deal. Anyway, Moving on, so the out advantages outweigh the disadvantages. So the disadvantages, the computer is less original. So meaning it's a bit less collectible. Like I don't know how in a collector's perspective, like maybe adding all these upgrades might not be good, but I don't really care. I have a, I've decided that this is gonna be my project computer and my grape is gonna be my collectible computer. This is the computer I'm gonna do all my modifications to. And the graphite computer is a uh, parts computer. Uh, moving on, uh, the nostalgia, I mean, I guess if you find the sound nostalgic, I mean, I find a lot of sounds nostalgic some, in some cases, so if maybe someone finds the sound nostalgic, that might be a disadvantage. Uh, not so easy to do without skill. Okay, so if you aren't very skillful with computers, 
I don't recommend doing this upgrade, or if you don't have enough tools. But I will be do I will be showing you how to uh, do this. So if you're interested, um, you can watch the rest of this video, and I'll show you a detailed instruction, detailed instructions on how to do this. And also, old data may be hard to transfer. So here's the thing. So if you if this is your personal computer that you plan on doing this to, and you want to get all the old data from this to this. One of the issues you may have is transferring data. So let's say you have like some old nostalgic games or maybe some programs and stuff that you want to keep using, but you also want the advantages of an SSD. One of the issues is getting all this stuff on a this, because in most cases you only have one of these, but in my case if I have two of these, which I do, I could easily just like transfer, I could easily just link them up together and transfer the files, but if you only have one, I mean, to, if you, it doesn't really matter, I mean, you can keep the hard drive and switch it whenever you want, but I'm going to install the SSD, there isn't even anything on this hard drive, it's just, it's just a complete blank install, I'm going to be keeping the hard drive anyway, so, finally, uh, here are some of the requirements and the upgrade stuff, so, so one thing you want to do is you want to keep all the old parts, like screws, the hard drive itself, Unless the hard drive's broken, you don't have to keep it, but I recommend keeping the hard drive just in case it doesn't work, or just in case the SSD doesn't work, or also just in case you want to switch back, or you, or sell the hard drive, because hard drives go for kind of a lot. Buy the necessary equipment and adapters. Take note of what you might need. So, for example, I needed this uh, adapter, which is what I bought. Uh, proceed with care and caution. You want to make sure that you don't break anything or be reckless, because you might damage something. These are old machines, and they're valuable, and you don't want to ruin their value with the uh, by destroying it i remember to upgrade firmware if needed okay so here's an important one if you are actually planning on installing mac os 10 on this thing one of the biggest things you have to make sure that your firmware the firmware on your imac g3 is updated so you can look it up i think it's like 4.1.9 is the highest firmware update because if the firmware isn't high enough on this uh then then the screen will go black and it sends you down this deep hell hole of a uh, of a repair progress process to try and get the thing working again. So just make sure the firmware is updated if you're doing Mac OS X, which is what I'm gonna be doing. And then if it doesn't work, you probably did something wrong and should retrace your steps and check your things. So if it doesn't work, you probably did something wrong. Maybe the SSD is incompatible. Maybe you forgot a step, it, maybe something. So it's best to retrace your steps if that happens. But anyway, now that we have uh, established all the things that we have to establish, uh, let's actually get this thing apart and uh, get to the repair, or I mean upgrade. Goodbye, hard drive. I'll see you on the other side. All right. So I know I go over the uh, disassembly process quite often when taking apart these old Macs, and the reason is that sometimes people don't know how to do this. For example, maybe this is the first video some people are watching and they haven't seen me already do this and even though I have done this a lot in my other videos I will be showing you all again anyway so first thing you want to do is you want to grab your toolkit this is mine and I actually put this in a neat little sticker on it of a compact Mac in pieces which is pretty neat so yeah anyway so what you're gonna do is you'll only need a, a Phillips head screwdriver set which is what I have here so uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just go through the. I'm just gonna gonna gonna, gonna go through the uh, disassembly process. All right. So first thing you want to do is you want to pop off this door, which is just like so easy peasy. It's a little tiny screwdriver. I'll put that door to the side and don't throw away anything when you're taking things apart. Uh, always make sure to keep things. Don't like throw anything away just in case it's an important thing. Next thing you want to do is you want to get a coin and do this. This isn't really necessary, actually. You could just upgrade the RAM this way if you want, but we're going to take the bottom case off so we can just close that back up. That's just to show you. But anyway, so the next thing we want to do, there's two screws here and two screws here. So what we want to do is we want to get a size 2 uh, Phillips head screwdriver, which is what I have here, and you just want to take out all four of the screws on the bottom case. All right, so once the four screws are removed, you just wanna pop this back case back, lift it like this, and the bottom case is off. All right, so you put that bottom case to the side. So, all right, so here's what we need to do now. Next up, we have to take up this uh, metal cover thing of a bobber. So what we wanna do here is we wanna get a, uh, 
Well, we might be using a size 2 again. Uh, yep, size 2 again. So for this part, we're just going to use a size 2 again. Um, so there's two screws here, two, one there, uh, one there, one there, and one there. So these screws here you don't have to worry about yet. Mine's missing over there. And these screws you don't have to worry about. And yeah, just you only have to worry about the screws that I mentioned. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to take those off and then I'll be back in a moment. For some of the harder to reach screws, like the ones over here, uh, I have this extension thingy mabobber that you just connect to the regular screwdriver like this and makes it a lot longer. And then you can put the bit at the, on the back and then it just makes it a whole lot longer. And this is really useful for a lot of things. So if your screwdriver isn't long enough, I'd recommend taking a look at your hardware store and seeing if they have one of these. Alright, once you got the uh, screws off, you should just be able to simply pull it off with a bit of force. And there it is. All right, so do not worry. Nothing in here is harmful. It may look a bit scary, but it isn't. I actually had, the, this was actually plugged in like not even five minutes ago, and I can touch everything, and it's all fine. I would stay away from this area, though, but don't be too scared. It's not really anything scary in here. So anyway, so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to replace the hard drive. So the first thing we're going to need to do is remove these RAM chips like so because these are going to be in the these are in the way of the hard drive all right so what we're looking at here is the hard drive is right here as you can see it's, it has this cable connected to it here this cable connected to it here this is the power cable this is the uh, info cable for like the information and stuff to share with the board and uh, yeah we're gonna have to unplug these so we're gonna first yeah you know, we're gonna take out these cables this cable here this smaller cable can be a bit difficult to take out and usually takes a while a bit of force. And this hard drive actually seems to be missing some screws. That's not good. Oh, so I guess someone had this apart at some point. So, there we go. And now the uh, hard drive does, no, does not have any more cables plugged into it. So let me move the camera up a bit closer so you can take a look at this. So this is uh, what we have here. Uh, these are the two cables I was talking about. This is the... Uh, something cable and this is the power cable i know what this does it, sh it like shares the information with the board and stuff so anyway moving on so we have two screws up here and two screws over here holding the hard drive in and for me for me there's only two screws because it's supposed to be four screws normally but it's missing some screws so i'm going to take it out like this and bada bing bada boom we now have our hard drive out of the computer. So this is the hard drive in all of its old-fashioned glory. This is a, uh, what is this, a 13 gigabyte? 30.7 gigabyte? No way. This was probably upgraded then. Well, actually, is it 30 gigabyte? It looks like 30 gigabyte. It says 30.7 gigabyte, so I'm going to trust that. I guess someone upgraded this, which is pretty fancy, but... It's not going to be as good, but it's not going to be as good as this thing. So, yeah, now that we have the hard drive out, we can put this to the side. Oh, yeah, I do not recommend throwing these away because you might have some important information on it or you might want to revert back to it or just keep it just in case the SSD has an issue or something. So, yeah. Anyway, so what you want to do is you want to get your fancy boy SSD and usually you can buy a bracket so you can use these smaller SSDs with the uh, larger sized hard drive. Mounting mounting holes, but I'm just gonna wing it and put it in. I really don't care about mounting This is really just an experiment to see if it works and how it's and what it's like But uh, so uh, yeah, so yeah, anyway, you just plug in these cables just like you would on the regular hard drive like this and uh, And there you go. It's in there and most people say that they don't like this because like the sounds it makes of it rattling around, but it's not like you're carrying this around like a laptop, so it's it's fine. And uh, yeah, so now all you want wait what you want to do is you want to put the RAM back in, put all the screws back in, and all the parts back on. Just basically repeat the steps I did backwards. And uh, yeah, now you have your SSD installed in your computer. Oh yeah, here's a uh, helpful tip. Um, if you get the hard drive and you get the old screws that held the hard drive in, if you're well, if you're like me and you're not using the screws to hold in the hard drive in again, uh, what I like to do is I like to twist the screws onto the holes that they originally mounted on so that you don't lose them. It's a pretty handy tip 
that I use on a lot of things. And uh, yeah, and they, you won't lose them, and you won't, or and you won't lose track of them or anything. So yeah, that's a helpful tip, just in case you're interested. All right, so I put the computer back together. So now what we're going to be doing is installing the necessary software. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing macOS 9.2.2. And one thing you have to note when doing this is certain iMac G3s have to have a specific requirement. Uh, for example, uh, most iMac G3s need 100. All iMac G3s need 128 megabytes of RAM to run. Sometimes the CD drive doesn't work, so if it doesn't work, it's probably the CD drive ha having an issue. And you also have to check if this model is compatible. So all iMac G3 models are compatible. You just have to make sure that they have 128 megabytes of RAM and the CD drive works. So when you boot this thing up, uh, it should turn on all right. However, one thing you'll notice is that it won't actually boot into anything. It won't boot into an operating system and nothing will happen. You'll just get a flashing folder in the middle of the screen. And this is normal because the SSD is doesn't come pre-installed with any old Mac OS software, obviously. And also any hard drive doesn't come installed with, usually doesn't come installed with the stuff that you want on it. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So we're just going to put the CDs in and everything, and we're going to install the OS. All right, so usually when your computer's erased, I'm pretty sure you can just put the CD in and it'll boot automatically off of it. Sometimes you have to press the C key, and if the C key doesn't work, you have to press Option while it's turning on, and then it will show you a boot menu, and it should include the CD somewhere. So anyway, let's wait for this to find the CD and uh, then we'll boot into Mac OS 9 and then we will install the necessary software. You know what? Screw this. Homemade CDs never work. I'm going to use an actual CD that came with one of my computers. This is a iMac G3 software store for DV models. This should work perfectly fine. It already has Mac OS 9.0.3 on it, which is a bit which is a bit lower than the one I was going to use, but who cares? So anyway, one tip that you want to know, one tip that you want to have when you uh, use one of these discs, is you have to make sure it's a software restore disc and not a software install disc. Software restore discs already have the uh, software installed. It has like iMovie, has like all these Word apps, all the all the cool stuff, all these all the game stuff, all the neat stuff that you want to have on the iMac. There is also an, a software install. Um, disc that also comes with IMAX or these software pouches that IMAX use and they're just called software install those just install the clean OS nothing else comes with nothing it's just the operating system and it kind of sucks so I'm gonna do the software restore this so anyway you just want to plop this bad boy in and it should just work perfectly fine because screw homemade copies homemade copies never work I literally spent like two hours making this yesterday and it doesn't even work what a waste of time that was. But anyway, if you press the option key while the computer starts up, it should um, give you something like this, and you have to wait for the disk to come up. Usually, if you just put in a disk, you have to press the reload button, and it should eventually come up as a little icon, and there it is. So then what you want to do once it comes up is you want to select it, and then you want to press the uh, arrow key, and it should boot you right into Mac OS 9. Alright, so what you want to do is you just want to press the C key until a menu like this appears. As you can see, it just looks like regular Mac OS 9, except with like a weird CD wallpaper, which is pretty neat. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to wait for this to boot up, and uh, then we'll get to the installation. Alright, so now that we've booted into the iMac Restore CD, uh, what we have to do now is we have to format the SSD. So if you don't know what formatting is... Uh, it's kind of difficult to explain. You basically just uh, make make you basically just the computer basically just writes it so that it knows what it is. Because currently, as you can see, there's nothing here. So what we have to do is we have to go into utilities and go to drive setup, and we have to format it. So there's gonna you're gonna get one of these. It says not initialized. So you're gonna press initialize, and you're gonna do initialize destroy all data. Who cares? There's nothing on there. Probably someone's old work stuff, because that's where it came from. This came from a work computer. And, uh, yeah, now it is on the uh, desktop. So we can just quit that. And, yeah, now we have the drive here. So now the SSD has been uh, 
initialize. So we can go to software restore. That's a th a bit, I had a bit of trouble with this before. Uh, the drive wouldn't show up for this part here because you can switch disks. You can do the restore CD and then you can do the uh, SSD. I was having trouble with that before, so uh, yeah, then anyway. Uh, erase untitled before restoring. Uh, I'm gonna do extended, because that sounds better. Uh, erase, completely erases. For restoring, uh, I guess that's good. Uh, yeah. That seems like a good one. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna do restore. And now, we just have this. And, uh, yep, that's what we're gonna do. And now we wait for like, I don't know, half an hour, and then it will complete. Or it'll go faster because this is a, uh, an SSD. I mean, I've done it with, uh, uh, older, hard, like regular older hard drives, like this thing before, and it's kind of slow. This seems to be going kind of fast, so I'll just let it sit and then I'll come back to you when it's done. And it looks like the partition, or I mean the uh, install, has finally been completed. So now all we have to do is press quit. Didn't even take that long. That wasn't even like, that wasn't even like five minutes. My god. That was fast, but anyway, now you see we have all this crap on. This is some of the crap I was talking about. Uh, it's not exactly crap. It's just all the neat stuff that comes with Mac OS when you do the restore option instead of the install option, like iMovie, Mail, which is useless, QuickTime, which is sort of useful, Sherlock, which is pretty nice to have. So yeah, now all we just got to do is uh, eject. No, we can't eject this, but we got to restart now. And now it should automatically boot into the SSD. But uh, anyway, so that's the uh, neat startup. I don't know, it's okay. I really like seeing like all the cool old iMacs. So it basically, so Apple basically just flex on you, flexes on you to see what, see the colors you could have gotten instead of the color you actually got. So that's a flex. Uh, all this crap, I'm not going to want to put in. Oh God, seriously. Okay, I'm gonna put in my first name. Mm. Uh. Uh. Okay, I'm just gonna skip all this boring stuff. Do 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 do. There we go. Uh, what is this primary use? Uh, government. What it describes what you do. I am a finance person and this is for serious business and screw your offer and screw this and I don't care and uh, yeah nice oh great no not this I do not want to go on the internet I'm not an shut up I hate when it does that it always tells you like oh are you sure you don't want to go on the internet you just spent a thousand dollars on this computer specifically designed for this no screw you uh, never. Uh, okay, there we go. And finally, we get to use this friggin' computer if it'll load. But yeah, that's the setup. Kind of boring, but it's also kind of interesting to see all the IMAX so that they can flex on you, as I said before. Like, you can get a lime and a tangerine. I don't even for sale anymore because Apple didn't. It's like a thousand years old. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna eject this disc now because we do not need it anymore iMac G3 running on SSD, as you can see, is working. Sound is not off, completely silent. There's absolutely no sound anywhere in the machine.